staying in Canberra for the moment. The wait for details of the Gillard government's carbon tax is nearly over. We'll get the full package on Sunday and the Prime Minister says after that she'll wear out her shoes selling it around the nation. The government's stocks will rise or fall on the policy but that's not all Labor's own work. One of those who's had a hand in crafting the carbon tax is independent MP Rob Oakeshott. He's in our Canberra studio and to speak with him is 7.30's political editor Chris Yulman. Rob Oakeshott, welcome. Thanks. First of all, do you think that the government's done a good job in handling the live exports issue? Oh, I think hopefully we can trawl through the tea leaves now that trade is back up and I think finally we've got to an important point of seeing trade starting to begin again. But there are issues that are outstanding and I hope we don't forget about those. The, the role of the MLA in particular uh, has obviously done some brand damage to trade relations with Indonesia and to the beef industry generally and I would hope as part of now um, starting trade again uh, and, and growing the industry that we can at the same time make sure that we have systems in place uh, that don't allow this to happen again so in the future. So Meat and Livestock Australia are asleep at the wheel as far as you were concerned? Well, if the reports are accurate, that within you know, weeks or months before some of that footage from Four Corners was taken, uh, that MLA was there and approving these abattoirs, um, then they are exposed. And I think uh, part of this process now of getting this industry back on track is making sure this cannot happen again. And we've got some accountability happening within MLA in particular. And the government is surely the buck stops there. Well, yeah, you know, this is a government body, so I would certainly hope that the Minister, in trying to clean up what was a very difficult and divisive issue, doesn't forget about cleaning up um, some issues in-house, and in particular, issues in and around the role that MLA has had to play in getting us into this situation in the first place. This is a very messy issue, and uh, do you think that you are tied now to everything that this government does, how they handle things? Oh, no, um, you know, I we'll crack them where we have to crack them, and on this one, you know, we've been cracking them along the way. I know parliamentary colleagues on the crossbench have been having a go um, and you know in conversations privately with the Prime Minister we've all been emphasising the point the importance of this industry um, so hopefully on this one they have learnt the lesson and we'll have a stronger industry now as a consequence. To climate change and on the committee that you're on what did you want to achieve and who did you want to protect? Oh, there was a whole range of issues. Probably the first one is agreement, you know, and doing what the 42nd Parliament couldn't. Three times legislation was put up and it failed. So in the 43rd Parliament, I would hope we now are at a point where we can have um, legislation put to the Parliament and that it can pass. So agreement in itself is a very important goal. Uh, governance structure that has an element of independence in it um, is important to me. And in the last uh, Parliament, I was moving amendments on that front. Uh, the tax reform issues are important, and I've spoken public, publicly about that. Uh, the land sector, compared to the old CPRS, uh, is important and hopefully is a real um, Australianisation of what we're trying to do in this package. The renewables and then the small business sector is also one that probably in the last package uh, didn't get the support it deserved, uh, particularly... Uh, in economic right. times now where some of those industries are flatlining. That's roughly the, yeah. what, where I've been coming from. What about the bottom from? line? What about cutting carbon by 5% by 2020? Will this package achieve that? Is that what you've been told inside the committee? Well, both major political parties have that as an end goal of, of cutting 5% by 2020. And, and so now... Package, well, well yep, now, to, will it achieve it? Yep, my understanding is this one will achieve it and hopefully set us on a platform where if and when international agreement comes, I think over the next decade, if not before, um, there will be, you know, we will be ready um, to potentially ramp up rather than be caught with a price shock when that international handshake takes place. But when you do things like carving out petrol, petrol for households and small businesses, does Treasury not tell you inside that committee, well, when you do that, the hammer will have to fall harder somewhere else in the economy? Uh, not necessarily. You know, we are going into what is, and I think New South Wales business are calling it uh, go slow and go low. And, uh, you know, that is the New Zealand model. And I think it's an eminently sensible one where we're not here to do an upfront price shock and we're not doing this to cause harm. This freight train of climate change is coming down the track. We've got to deal with it. Uh, and it's better we deal with it now. And we deal with it in the most strategic and efficient way that we possibly can. The scientists of Australia are saying there's a problem. I rely on that f uh, from, you know, I don't have anything more than they've got. Anymore. The well, question is your solution, isn't it, now? It will all fall to what your solution is and whether or not it's effective. Yeah, but the solution then is to a problem that the scientists are saying exists and the economists are saying is the most efficient and effective solution. So I don't have any broader information or information over and above what either the scientists of Australia are identifying as a problem and the economists uh, are saying is the solution. I think my job as part of this parliament is to try and deliver on that. When you look at compensation, why is it that we all benefit from cheap power and yet consumers 
deserve compensation for it and those who produce that power don't? Uh, look, I think, you know, we'll see what happens as far as this package. At the electricity sector is where the big challenge is and households will see um, some price rises, but at the same time there will be an assistance package. So I hope when everyone has a look at this on Sunday night, they'll have a look at the cost benefit. Um, and, you know, in the negotiations to try and get something through this parliament, uh, there are interests uh, around the table wanting to protect vested interests and we've got to try and achieve the pragmatic outcome of legislation that All we right. can get through this parliament. Finally, on another matter, will you support the government's bid to means test the private health insurance rebate? Yeah, it's statistics at 10 paces on that one. So um, I'm going to use the period between now and Parliament coming back on the 15th of August to keep talking to all the various players. The industry saying one thing, government saying another. I'm going to try and get them in the one room and uh, we'll punch it out. Robert, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.